Hi and welcome to the Yarpaz Training UAV Control Certificate Guide. Today we'll look at how to get started and obtain your CASA approved control certificate. My name's Ryan and I'm one of the instructors at Yarpaz Training and throughout this video I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step guide of how to jump through the hoop so to speak in order to get your operator's certificate. To begin with, let's look at the difference between an operator's and controller's certificate. Now there are two certificates. The first type is a controller certificate, which we are mostly concerned with today. And it's basically like a license to operate an unmanned aerial vehicle for commercial purposes. Commercial purposes simply mean that you're being paid or benefiting financially from operating the UAV. You would still need to operate under a company with this certificate, so I just want to emphasize that. The second certificate is the operator certificate, and this is issued to the company that is responsible for the UV, and they are directly responsible to CASA. So they have to answer a whole heap of other requirements in order to get that certification. Now at RPAS Training, we've developed a simple step-by-step -step graphical schematic for both the operators and controller certificates to assist you. Let's have a look at the operator certificate first. Now looking at the schematic here, you can see there's about 18 steps or so that need to be conducted in order for a company to obtain the UAV operator certificate. I'll just mention a few of the key things. So you need to develop a business plan and market analysis. You'd have to conduct risk assessments for the jobs that you're going to be conducting. And also mainly develop an operations manual. And that's quite a large part of this process. That includes things like the general policies and procedures, RPAS operating procedures, internal training within the organization, and sort of aerial work operations. In addition to that, you need to develop a flight manual for each remotely piloted aircraft type, and also a maintenance manual for each of your aircraft types. You'd also have to appoint a chief controller who's going to look after the other uh, pilots within the organization. And once you had all this paperwork done, you could then start looking at submitting that for a pre-application interview with CASA. They then give you a bit of feedback and prepare you for your practical assessment. And you would then basically be assessed by CASA. They'll turn up, do an assessment with you, practical flying as well as practically assessing how you're actually operating and how that, the way you're operating compares with what you've written in your operations manual. And once the assessment has passed, you basically wait for your USC to be issued by CASA provided that you're approved. And then you can operate commercially as a company using UAVs remotely piloted aircraft. Now at RPAS we offer a very streamlined way to get you through that um, and so if you give us a call we can talk to you about how we can take you basically from right at step one all the way through to step 18 as quickly as possible. Let's have a look at the UAV controller certificate steps now and you'll notice here that we've got 11 steps so a little bit easier and that's because this is for the individual and we're going to look at these steps one by one today and just go through it systematically and get you on your way. So let's have a look at the first one. So step one, obtain your ARN. Now an ARN is basically an aviation reference number and it's similar to an account or customer number. It should be quoted with all official communications with CASA. Now it's something that's unique to you and it's basically how they identify you in the aviation world. In order to obtain an ARN we need to complete a form online so let's look at how we do that together. If you open up Google and type in CASA, you'll see the Civil Aviation Safety Authority homepage at the top. Let's click on that. And then we're going to enter in here ARN Form 1162. And if you search for ARN Form 1162, they'll come up with a list here of matching documents and looks like number four here, the PDF. Click on that and it comes up with the ARN application form. Now the top of this form is fairly self-explanatory. You've just got your, your name and then the address that you're currently at and then a declaration by you. But what I want to draw your attention to is just down here this second paragraph on page two, the identification section. It says acceptable forms of identification are birth certificates, current passport identification pages or Australian citizenship certificates. So you notice that your driver's license is not mentioned there, so your driver's license will actually not suffice for this identification. So make sure you've got an authorised copy of one of those three documents. Attach that to this first page and send it off to CASA. Now you're usually looking at about 10 to 14 days to get that back in the mail, and I encourage you to do that as soon as possible because you need that 
for booking your exam and all your paperwork that's coming up. So once you've applied for your ARN, you're on to step two, which is purchase the PPL theory books and exam tools. Now there are a few items that you'll need to pass the PPL tests and that are going to assist you with the exam itself. Firstly, you'll need some study material, and we recommend the Bob Tate, BAK and PPL textbooks. You'll also need a ruler and plotter for navigation calculations. You'll need a PCA chart, which basically covers areas around Australia. It's useful for meteorology and aviation forecasts. And an en-route supplement of Australia, which is an URSA. Um, basically, that book covers every aerodrome of Australia and also has a lot of other useful information. So a very important thing to have the URSA. Lastly, if you choose to study through us, we'll provide you with a PPL manual, which is a shortened version, very to the point, covering the most relevant areas to save you time with your own study. And on that note, step three is study. Look, for the PPL exam, whether you choose to self-study or join one of our focused PPL courses, you'll need to do a fair bit of study at home. The areas of knowledge that will be assessed on your PPL exam are aerodynamics, and this is mainly concerned with lift, weight, thrust, and drag, and how an aircraft flies. Thrust in particular is very important to UAV or remotely piloted aircraft operations. You'll also be assessed on aircraft general knowledge, which is to do with the mechanical side and systems of an aircraft, and meteorology, which is concerned with local as well as global weather changes. In addition to that, we'll learn how to read an aviation meteorology forecast which is particularly practical for UAV operations. Air law, another item which will be assessed on the exam, which is rules of the air. Performance as well, so how performance will change with density and planning, which is concerned with navigation. Now I mentioned before at our past training that we conduct PPL courses, and we have a couple of different courses to assist you in passing your PPL exam. The first type is a five-day, fast-tracked, full-time course. And it's usually four to five people in a classroom environment with an instructor covering the required material and answering any questions you may have. We also have an online course, so all the material is online. You can work through that material at your own pace and we'll include a web tutorial where we can answer any questions that you might have and then also a day of instruction at the end where we'll go through some review questions and also complete your AROCP, which I'll talk more about shortly. Now for both our courses, we will travel to you. If you have enough people for a five-day course, we'll travel to you. Or if not, we'll try and launch a course in your area to save you traveling. Alternatively, you could travel to our home base at Kiama on the east coast of New South Wales. Now it's a beautiful location. And if you do travel to Kiama for one of our courses, we can also offer you a trial flight, which is where you go for a flight in an aircraft for about 30 minutes over the coast. Not only is the view amazing, but you also get a bit of a practical experience with this PPL theory that you will have been studying. Okay, step four, get an AROCP. Now, an AROCP is an Aircraft Radio Operator Certificate of Proficiency. Basically, it allows you to communicate via an airband radio from the ground to all aircraft and helicopters in normal and emergency operations. So in order to get this, you need to sit an approved course with an approved instructor pass a theory exam with a minimum of 80% and also a short practical exam. Now we offer this as part of our PPL course, so if you do do your PPL course through us, we'll also certify you and get you your ARNCP form signed off and sent away. Step five, get a BAK exemption. Now the PPL exam is primarily an aviation based exam and its prerequisite is known as the BAK or Basic Aeronautical Knowledge Exam. Now this would normally be conducted in-house at a flight school, but being UAV operators, CASA has offered an exemption so that you don't need to sit the BAK. Now you'll need to obtain your exemption before you sit the PPL by emailing CASA, and we can show you how to do this. Step six, book the PPL theory exam date. Now I'd recommend getting this done as soon as possible. You can do that online through the ASL website, and I'll step you through now how that website works. So let's go to Google again. And just search ASL exam in Google, and you'll see aslexam.com up top. And then it will take you to the ASL website. Now, in order to register to sit an exam, 
you need to complete a registration and you'll notice here that they ask for your aviation reference number, your ARN. So you'll need to get that ARN form out ASAP, like I said, so that you can at least book your exam. So you put your ARN in here with your date of birth and they'll log you into the system and then you can start making exam bookings. What I'll draw your attention to though is just the menus over here on the left which we can access without logging in. So the top left menu there basically gives you all of the exam centres in Australia based on their alphabetical letter which is handy so you could find a location near you and basically the exam setups are just a room with several desks and computers so it's an online system you submit the exam and then you get the result back immediately. If you go down here to exam schedule uh, we can use this menu to select the exam type and then also see well, whether it's available during certain dates. So the specialization you want to select is this PEXO flight crew examinations and this will be the same for when you book the exam. You'll need to select this exam. The license you want is the PPL. The exam here is a second from the bottom, the PPLA, private pilot license. And then the region is wherever you're sitting. Let's say New South Wales. And the venue, well, we'll just go for Bankstown, but you can see you've got a few other options there that you could use. Preferred date. All right, I'm going to go with the 9th here, and let's see how we go. When we hit next, it'll come up with whether or not I can sit on the preferred date, and it will also give me an idea of which dates are available. So let's look at what that looks like. Okay, so Monday the 9th of June is out. There's nothing available there. You can see that Friday the 13th of June, we've got a booking in 8.30 we could take. And then the next one, the next future session is actually on the 24th. So quite a large gap there, which is why you want to try and book ahead. If you click on the next week, it will then show you the next week's availabilities. And if you were in the booking section when you logged on, you could basically select the, uh, the session and then book your exam in. So that's how the ASL exam website works. Once you book the exam date, we're going to step seven, which is to pass the PPL theory exam. Now, I guess that's the hard part. The exam is around three and a half hours. It's about 55 to 60 multiple choice questions, which is the good news. But provided you have done the review questions that we've given you through our course, or you worked through the Bob Tate book, you should be fine. And you are allowed to sit that exam multiple times. There's a week lockout period. Um, but unfortunately, you will have to repay the fee if you do need to reset. The fee is around $160, so just factor that into your equation when you are thinking about adding everything up. Okay, step eight. You're going to need to obtain a manufacturer's assessment. Now basically this um, includes flying schools, checks, planning and safety requirements according to the RPA manufacturer, and that's depending on the model of the UOV or the model of the RPA. Step nine, log five hours of flying experience. Again, whichever UAV or RPA you're going to be using, you'll need to log five hours on that type. So if it's a Phantom, you'll need five hours in a Phantom. If it's an S1000, five hours in the S1000. Now you can prove that via a logbook or a spreadsheet, or perhaps try RPAS Logger, which is a mobile app which we've produced that logs your flight hours, your pilots, your battery details. It has everything in one place, and we're only going to add more functionality to that in the future. I'll give you a quick look at what it looks like now. So this is the main RPAS logger screen, and there's a few things that we've incorporated in this. You've got checklists in here, you've got uh, information on your batteries, you have uh, logs of your pilots and also the aircraft flown and the time flown, as well as things like attachments and whatnot. We're only adding more functionality to this. So you can do everything that you need to for the reporting side of things in RPAS logger itself. And it can be found in the Android store or on the iOS store in June. Step 10 is a Class 2 medical certificate. Now, this is optional. Certain companies may ask you for this, or you may choose as an operator to make a standardized medical mandatory for your employees. If so, see the CASA website for a list of designated aviation medical examiners and book an aviation medical with them. Um, when you see them, ask for a Class 2, and you'll need to renew that every two years with them. Step 11. Once you've compiled all of the above and completed all 10 steps, submit your UAV control certificate application form to CASA and you're on your way. Now we'll have a look at that form now, which is form 1087. Again, we'll head back to the CASA website and we'll type in form 1087. Um, it's going to be initial issue, this one. 
And then you're just basically filling out each relative item, which is um, compiled from what you've done in the last 10 steps. And there's a checklist here at the end that you would just work through to make sure you have got everything covered before putting your signature on the page and sending that off to CASA. So these are the basic 11 steps in obtaining your controller certificate. I'll just quickly touch on them again. Remember, obtain your ARN, get that done as soon as possible. Purchase the PPL theory books and exam tools. Study for the private pilot theory exam. And we do offer two courses, like I said, a five-day course and an online course. Give us a call if you want us to help you attain that goal. Get an AROCP. Get a BAK exam exemption and try and send that off as soon as possible so you had that prior to your exam. Book the exam date. Again, another as soon as possible item. Pass the PPL theory exam, so 70% for that one. Obtain your manufacturer's assessment. Log five hours of flying experience on the aircraft type. Obtain a medical certificate if required, and then submit your UAV controller certificate form to CASA, which we just had a look at on the CASA website. All being well, CASA will send back your certificate, and you'll be authorised to operate commercially then for a company that has their operator certificate. So you can go and not only have fun flying a UAV, but also work in the industry. Now, like I said, if we can help you in any way, please contact us on 1300 772 787 or at rpastraining.com.au.